Okay, so today we're here to talk about frozen shoulder and my top five yoga pose fixes for frozen shoulder. Once you're cleared from your doctor or your physical therapist to start your rehabilitation are cat-cow, an arm-up movement, inverted table move, an up-dog, down-dog, and supine punches. So unlike some of the other videos in this course for shoulder problems, these are going to be more moves rather than long holds when you're focusing on your breath and increasing your stretch and range of motion. These are going to be moves to strengthen, to increase mobility in your shoulders, to also increase flexibility and mobility in all the surrounding joints and muscles of the shoulder as well. So the first one we're going to do is cat-cow. I have Chelsea here again with me today and she's going to start on her hands and knees and like I stress all the time, always want to stack the joints. That's your strongest position to be in. So in table pose, you're gonna have your hips right over your knees, your lower leg directly out of your knee, so your toes are untucked. If you tend to get cramping in your feet, you could always tuck the toes under. Shoulders over elbows over wrists, palms flat, fingers spread. Your source of energy here and your connection to the earth is through your hand and through your whole lower leg. So try not to just put all the weight in your knees because you want a little bit more power when you're coming into this stretch move and you're gonna get that if you push the whole lower leg into the floor. So this is neutral. This is just table pose neutral. And what we're gonna do is go into a cat pose first. So Chelsea's gonna push the floor away and she's gonna raise her back up like a cat you would see illustrated for Halloween pictures. She's pushing super hard, the floor away from her with her arms. She's letting her head hang, and she's getting this amazing arching in her back, or rounding, I should say, in her back, and stretching the whole posterior spine. At the same time, she's pushing through her lower legs so that it gives her an incredible tailbone tuck, too. So we're trying to give mobility to all the space between the vertebra, open up the posterior shoulder girdle, back of the neck, and start to free up the deltoid from the side around to the front. You take a few deep breaths here, and then you release, pass through table neutral, how we started, and then you're gonna go into the cow, which is an arching of the back. Now don't mistake this for a resting pose or a sinking. You're still really pushing the floor away, and you wanna extend your neck out, roll your shoulders up, back down, heart through, head back. You can even start to lift the chin and get a little bit more stretch in the front of the neck. So we're working neck, shoulders, chest, and also stretching out the front of her spine now. So when she's in cat, it's whole posterior body. When she's in cow, it's all anterior body. So we're getting all this flexion extension in the spine, giving a little bit more freedom into the arm. So you just keep going. Inhaling, you suck it into cat, exhale and into cow. I really don't care if you have a uh, problem, you know, thinking about your inhale, exhale, as long as you are inhaling and exhaling. And just do this one to three minutes, really engaging, really pushing, get all the space between the vertebrae lengthened so your back can start to take away some of that pressure and work that the shoulder sometimes is taxed to do. And then just rest. It's not that bad, but you really want to start building heat and go in and really do it. And now she's gonna swing it around. We're gonna go into arm ups. So I do wanna just sidetrack a little bit and say that I always start all my classes with these two movements, twisting. If you've ever, ever done any of my videos, you'll always see this. And the arm ups are part of that as well. So you're gonna to come to easy cross leg, just like she is. If it's hard, you could even do this in a chair. You could sit on a block. The idea is to have an elongated spine so that you're in the proper alignment so you can get the most use out of your shoulders. If you're collapsed, then you're not gonna really open your arms properly. So it's really important that you feel your hips on the floor, you're launching up through your spine, through the top of your head, and your arms are out directly to the sides. Chelsea's gonna take a deep breath in. When the arm comes up on your inhale, the palms face up. And the arms come down, palms face down on the exhale and you're just gonna keep going like that. So it's inhale up, exhale down. I do this with my athletes two to three minutes. I want you to start about 30 seconds, working it up to three minutes. It's going to obviously 
start to work that shoulder, get it very gently used to opening up. When the arms come up, let's make sure the shoulders don't come into the ears, that you're giving a lot of space around the neck. And when they're, they're up, feel real length and opening in your side body. So you're gonna inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Just with your breath, as slow and controlled as you need to be. Arms are strong and straight. Try not to be here because that's really going into the elbow and it's not affecting the shoulder at all. Sometimes you'll feel or hear a little clicking. As long as there's no pain involved with that clicking, you're okay. And if you feel a little restriction coming all the way up, you could always bring your hands out in front of you a little bit and start that way. It just may be the structure of your shoulder doesn't allow the arms to go all the way up. You're really gonna build a lot of heat in the shoulder, start to make some strength in the shoulder as well, and increase that mobility so we get good range of motion which translates into power. So next, take a deep breath in and bring the hands down. And next she's gonna turn sideways and we're gonna go into inverted table. And there's a move in inverted table. She's gonna start with her legs straight out in front first and bring your hands behind you on the floor, palms flat, fingers spread, plug those hands into the floor. Roll your shoulders up back down so you know that you're in the right position and you're opening the heart. Squeezing shoulder blades behind you a little bit to increase that strength as well. Bend the knees, feet flat, and feet are gonna be about hips to shoulder width apart. Use the whole foot. One mistake people make is they only push through the heel so they're not accessing the whole leg. You wanna use the whole foot when you're pressing down to lift up. So you're gonna push into your hands, push into your feet. You're gonna inhale the butt all the way up to the sky. Notice stacking the joints, nice and strong, stacking, stacking. Then when she exhales, she's gonna come back down, bring the butt all the way through, legs straight, chin to the chest. And then you're all set up and inhale, go again. So it's inhale up and then exhale down. If you really wanna build some strength, don't even let your butt touch when you're in this position. Inhale up and exhale down. We'll let her do that a couple minutes while I talk to you. We're gonna do this 30 seconds to three minutes. Deep breathing, a lot of power in the shoulders, strengthening the entire arm and seeing how we're opening, gently opening that ball and socket joint and giving it more mobility and range of motion. Good, and then come to seated. So again, that looks kind of easy. She makes it look very smooth and easy, but you may be only to do three or four of them in the beginning. Whatever you can do, do, and slowly build up your strength and you'll see a lot of changes taking place. So you're gonna come onto your hands and knees. The next move we're gonna do is an up dog, down dog. But there's a little bit of a twist here. It's not a regular upward dog. So Chelsea's gonna start in downward dog. Hands shoulder width apart, palms flat, fingers spread. Feet, hips to shoulder width apart. She can get her heels down. If you can't, don't worry about it. Most days I can't get my heels down, so it's not a, an issue. What is important to me is that your back is nice and flat like hers is. If you're tight, Sometimes, can you round your back? Sometimes people look like this. They're forcing the legs so straight that they can't really get the back flat. And it's way more important to have the knees bent a little bit and a strong, straight, flat back. And then you can see how really nice the shoulders set up and how we're stacking the joints in one line. So once you find your good down dog, your feet are not gonna move. Your hands are not gonna move. They're strong, straight, and grounded right where they are. Glue them down. You're gonna come forward into an up dog, but you're gonna keep the toes tucked. So normally, is that your back that just cracked? Yeah, like <laughs> so normally, you're gonna untuck the toes in up dog. For this move, we're not. So it's an inhale into your up dog, shoulders roll up back down, pushing the floor away, joints are nice and stacked, and then downward dog. So inhale, up dog. Sit, shoulders back, and down dog. Her back keeps cracking. I don't know if that's good or bad, but <laughs> inhale, up dog, and exhale, down dog. You can start with five reps, working up to 30, or if you're like me, I'd rather just set the timer for 30 seconds to two minutes. Keep going like that. As you can see, huge strengthener in down dog, huge opener in up dog, really increasing that range of motion and mobility in the shoulder joint and all the surrounding muscles and joints to help you get the best relief from that frozen shoulder. 
Good. Just do one more. And in your down dog. And you maybe want to hold it a couple seconds here. Really feel the strength building. And then go ahead and lower the knees. You could even go into child's pose after this if you want. Take a couple deep breaths. Rest the shoulders and kind of just feel. Don't define what you're feeling. Just feel. <sighs> I could relax. I could take a deep breath. Last one we're going to do for frozen shoulder to increase mobility, range of motion is on your back, supine punches. So supine is face up on your back and you're going to rest your shoulders on the ground. So I want you to roll your shoulders up back down, feel the connection and just extend your arms straight up to the sky. As we talked about before, we may not be bearing weight now on the arms, but we're still stacking the joints. So she's not here, she's not here, she's straight up to the sky. There's a couple of variations I'd like you to do here, but all you're going to do, and you may not even be able to see it really well here, is push up to the sky. So go ahead and reach and see, and you can do both at the same time. Yeah. Good. You see how that's stretching, really giving her a little bit of a stretch. You'll feel it all in the back of that scapula, and then retract, and just keep going like that. So the first maybe 30 seconds, fingers extended, palms face each other, then Palms face the front of the room and keep going like that. Very little, but you'll feel little differences. Once you change the angle of your hands, you might start feeling a little bit more lats. And then you're going to do fists right where you are and punch up. And then fists face each other. You can do 30 reps. You could do 30 seconds each position. And then I really like to come back to neutral with your arms and flex the wrist as much as you can. Fingers spread, palms as flat as you can like you're raising the roof. Now you're going to get into the wrist joint, the forearms. You'll start to affect the bicep, tricep as well. And as long as you're breathing, I'm not as concerned where the inhale, exhale is. Good. And then just relax, arms down by your side. So those are my top five picks for frozen shoulder to increase mobility in the shoulder and the surrounding muscles and joints of the shoulder. We had the cat-cow movement, we had the arm-up movement, the inverted table movement, up-dog-down-dog, and the supine punches with all variations. You could do them every day, every other day, whatever feels good for you, but if you feel any bad pain, stop. Maybe contact your doctor, ask them what's going on, change your positioning a little bit, and then restart again. So thank you, Chelsea, and that's all for today. We'll see you next time.